I always see the music as another character in a film. Whether it's only one cue used throughout the film or whether it's scored wall to wall, I'd like the music to have an impact. George, when did you start composing and what or who were your early influences and passions? Well, I grew up in a very rich uh, musical environment. Uh, my grandfather played the violin and my mother sings opera and uh, I was growing up, you know, appreciating all kinds of music. Um, so in terms of my, my first compositions, um, I went to the English school in Nicosia and um, our two drama teachers there, Mr. Eric Helicar and, and Maro Polidoro, so a very early potential um, that I had in composition and that gave me the opportunity to uh, compose uh, uh, the music for the school's play uh, three years in a row and we won an award by the Ministry of Education too. So, you know, that gave me a lot of confidence uh, to pursue music further. And after that, I started songwriting. I, I entered some competitions. I wrote the song Porizin, which won the, the, the traditional music Cyprus uh, competition and the Eurovision Song Contest after that in 1999. And I went to study at uh, Berkeley College of Music, uh, the Royal College of Music in London. I took a class, uh, 101 film scoring, and with um, uh, a person um, who was basically the editor of very, very big films. You know, he worked with Michael Kamen, um, and um, he based, you know, after that class, I, I was convinced this, that this is what the, you know, my path should be. The aspects of my character is I'm very, very self-critical. <laughs> so I met um, a fantastic music supervisor and producer called Graham Walker. Uh, he has done uh, The Talent of Mr. Ripley, Sleepy Hollow, uh, huge, huge films. And he gave me the opportunity. He loved my music. Uh, I sent him my demo. He loved my music. He called me and says, I'm going to give you the opportunity to compose the music for, for this film if the director likes it because other composers are also pitching for it. But the director chose me and I, I, I composed a, a, a scene and he loved the music and then I, I scored the whole film. We had a wonderful orchestra, that was my first ever gig. But it, it went really well and uh, you know, we recorded the orchestra and then we went to the premiere in London and then I saw the film and they basically mixed the music very loud. They, they enjoyed the music a lot. But for me, it was wrong. Some, some since I felt that the music was too loud. But then, in the end, after I, you know, I listen to it now, it sounds, it sounds great. It sounds fine. But you know, being the person that I am, I'm always kind of self-critical a little bit, you know, so about my work. What do you personally consider incisive moments in your work or your career? Uh, well, I think that the most prominent moment was, uh, as mentioned before, and I'm repeating myself, meeting Graham because that was the first step. I was working uh, as a uh, composer's assistant for three or four years and you're always looking for that opportunity to grab, uh, you know, as you're starting your career and then you have to be ready for it and, um, you know, Graham coming and giving me that opportunity, I still had to kind of fight for it and, and obviously write great music to, to be able to start my career, but, you know, that was the first step. So I think that and then Four or five years ago, that was the second step when I started my collaboration with Walt Disney Pictures uh, for the first time. Because I think any composer's dream is to, to start, you know, start your template looking at the Disney logo, you know, and uh, you know they, they do fantastic films, you know, very innovative, uh, you know, direction. So you know, I'm doing the third film for them uh, starting in a month's time. So I'm very very um, grateful for that. The relationship between music and cinema has become increasingly important. How do you see this relationship yourself and how far do you feel music relates to other senses than hearing alone? You know, for every composer, all your different uh, hearings that you have throughout the years somehow get kind of embedded in, in, at the back of your brain. So once you're ready to, to start scoring a scene, there's different influences that somehow, I don't know, magically appear, you know, between the brain and the fingers that you're kind of improvising that creates, you know, this magic that we call music. I focus on, on thematic music. I love melody. Uh, I think melody is, is king, you know, in everything. So, 
you know, I try and make the music and the score very prominent. I always see the music as another character in a film, um, whether it's only one cue used throughout the film or whether it's like scored wall to wall, you know, I'd like the music to have an impact. How have you found the industry in Los Angeles and have you found support from the Greek community there? I mean, in general, I think the, funny enough, the industry or the business, as, as some people call it here in LA, is, is much smaller than one would think. I mean, I, I got introduced to filmmakers by, by people that I never met just because they worked on a project that uh, I worked on. And it might, it might have been an assistant director or an assistant lighting guy, you know, that I never met. And, you know, so it's actually smaller than we think. And, and definitely there's a, a wonderful Greek community here in LA. A couple of years ago, I worked on a, a wonderful film called Cliss of Freedom. And the story was written by Maria Metropoulos and executive produced by Jim Metropoulos, who are uh, Greeks based here. So, you know, it's wonderful to be able to come together and create, you know, music and film together. You know, if I would describe it in one word, it would be, you know, music is the soul of, of, the, of a film. Um, I think there's also a saying by Steven Spielberg that he said that his uh, his films without John Williams' music would be a corpse, you know, because there's no much emotional uh, aspects without the music.